My name is Paula Wakasik, and I'm here representing Whoopsie. I'm also a plumber at the University of Washington since 2003. The bid limit for public works in higher education hasn't changed since 2009. Wages and material costs have gone up substantially. Examples are pain has gone up 100%, plumbing fixtures and piping 80%. Inflation on materials and wage increases means that even small maintenance or remodel projects are going out to the lengthy bid process. These were jobs that we used to be able to do. Upping the limit from 45,000 to 90,000 for a single trade and 90,000 to 110,000 for multiple trades means we could do more work in house. This saves the state and the higher institutions money. Higher institutions are always coming to the legislature saying that they need more funding. If they pay two to three times to contract out this work because of having to pay prevailing wage, then I can understand why they say they need more funding. Having their in-house staff do the work at half the cost saves time and money. One example of why the limit needs to be raised is the U of W needed a chiller replaced, but the chiller cost $45,000. This left no room for a single trade refrigeration shop to do the work because of the bid limit. Also, the shops at all the higher education institutions are asked to come back and finish or fix what the contractors won't come back to do. So this adds to the cost for the contract because like at the U of W, they back charge the contractor. Thank you for letting me speak today, and I hope you will pass this bill. Any questions? Well, I think you had kind of answered my question, so I don't have any question, but we do have a question from Representative Entman, Vice Chair Entman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you explain a little bit more? I, I'm not used to the bidding process. You said something about back charging the contractor. For a person who knows nothing about contracting, can you tell me what that means? Well, that means in either new projects or small remodels that the contractors get, if they don't finish the job or there's, you know, they have to come, they're asked to come back to fix something and they figure it's not worth their time or money. So they know that the U of Dub in, in this instance will just have the trades do the work. And so we end up doing the work, but it ends up costing the university more because they have to pay for our time. Did that answer your question? Sorry, I'm going to ask one more clarifying question. So you are a person who works for the University of Washington all the time. You are hired by the UW, and when a Correct. contractor comes in and does the work, you finish up the work for the contractor if they do not complete the task as assigned? Correct. And then the UW just eats that cost? Well, they try to, you know, try to get it from the contractor, but a lot of times they just eat it because they feel it's not worth the hassle of going after the contractor and trying to get them to come back. They call them, they don't come. They call them, they don't come. And the clients want the work finished, so they just have the shops do the work. Does this behavior prohibit the contractor from future contracts with the University of Washington? No, never has. They keep using the same contractors. Thank you. Thank you. 